Geography now Poland. Poland. We've been to Poland, actually. We went there and we, made one vlog video on our vlog channel. Link we in the traveled description. all over the country. We visited like 25 different cities. Oh. It was like seven months in Poland. Just kidding. It was a one-day layover in Gdansk. But if we, you want to check that out. One video. Link in the description. Yes. We will go back to Poland. I really liked Poland. I thought the Gdansk was... We were very surprised. Really cool. The food there was really good. Mm. And there's a lot more to discover for us. And we need more than one day in Poland. But now, before we go back, we're going to learn a little bit more about Poland. So we know what more things to see, eat, do. And you can also let us know more things to see, eat, do in the comments below. Geography Now, always a good introduction to new reaction countries. Obviously, he's going to get some stuff wrong, possibly. So let us know what he does down in the comments below. Oh, all right, well, let's do this. Here we go. Right, we've reached Poland. Europe's, uh, how can I put this? Poland knows how to take a hit. It's like... <laughs> Is that all you got? I'm not even breaking a sweat, It's time to learn geography now. By the way, this is my buddy Art. He's half Polish. Uh, Art, do you know anything about Poland? I know nothing the ginger about Poland. Wolverine. I know my last oh. name means on Friday. So anyway, I have another Polish friend named Conrad who's actually also going to be in this episode. He's Polish and he speaks Polish. Hey, f that guy. Well, uh, Art, you can also play Poland in the skits and stuff in this episode. Is that cool? Yeah, I guess so. All right, cool. Anyway, hey, everybody. I'm your host, Barbs. Welcome to hey, the Barbs. Wolverine of Europe. The Poles know how to deal with calamity, and if there was ever a mutant apocalypse, you would probably want one on your team. In any case, let's Good begin. Enough. How to piss off a Polish person one-on-one. Oh man, I just visited Poland. I sure loved that Eastern European country. It's Central! Uh, Central, Central Europe! European. Yeah, they don't like being called Eastern Europe. Even though, I mean, come on, they're kind of more on the eastern side of the continent. And it's, okay, okay, Central, Central, Central European, Central. The country is located in Central Europe and bordered by seven other countries. Keep in mind, this little guy right here is a detached exclave of Russia called Kaliningrad. Speaking of which, we already mentioned this in the Germany episode, but Poland shares an island called Uzedom, or Uznam, with Germany in this lagoon. The borders follow some natural boundaries like rivers and mountains. However, most of them were agreed upon after war times. The country is divided into 16 voivodeships or provinces, the capital and largest city of the country, Warsaw, in the center. It also holds the busiest airport, Warsaw International. From there, the second largest city is Krakow, known as the medieval capital down south, and it holds mm -hmm. the second largest airport, John Paul II Krakow International. John Paul's. Rounding out for third place is the city of Łódź, which means... Wow, we didn't even go to the top three. Wait, in Krakow, how the heck is this pronounced? And rounding out for third place is the city of Wuch. Which... Wuch? Wuch? Good to know. I totally, we totally called it Lods. We would, yeah, Lods. <laughs> Woods. Wuch. Okay. Wuch. Lit. Boat. Okay. Which oh. means boat nearly in the center of the whole country. Nonetheless, the city of Gdansk holds the third largest Gdansk. airport, Gdansk International, and also the busiest shipping port located on the Baltic Sea, where much of the cargo comes into the country. Otherwise, their entire sea access is confined to the coastline. They do not own any distant islands in the Baltic. Due to the general flat landscape making much of the north and central parts, Poland is a bustling transport hub with numerous roadways that traverse every single corner into every neighboring nation. Since joining the EU, nearly 2 billion euros have been invested in Poland's rail lines and high-speed lines are being constructed today. Poland doesn't have any autonomous nice. areas, but if we had to discuss historical and cultural regions, many people may just refer to this general area as Masuria, sometimes even historical Prussia. This general area mm -hmm. is Pomerania. That's right, same as the dog, which is where it comes from. Oh! The Those little frackers come from that area specifically? That's such a small little section. Yeah, I, I wouldn't have expected them to come from northern Poland. Me neither. I don't know where I expect no, them to come from. No, I don't know from. where I expect like any dogs to come from, to be honest. Except for a husky. Yeah. In Democratic Republic of the Congo. Yeah, yeah. The coastal area is Kashubia, where the Kashubians are mostly found. There's Greater Poland, Lesser Poland, which at the very border has Ruthenia or, or Red Ruthenia. Parts of the south or are they considered ever do to be Silesia, less. which are inhabited by peoples that have their own distinct culture apart from the Polish. It's all <laughs> kind of confusing, and we'll talk more about it later. One thing you have to understand is that historically, Poland had a lot of different types of administrative divisions, and much of it was shaped by war. Sometimes they had more land, other times they had less, and for 123 years, they kind of disappeared altogether. Here's Prussia! 
Russia! Russia! Austria! Well, actually, they almost completely disappeared. I mean, Krakow was technically a free city state for about 30 years. And keep oh, in mind, wow. we mentioned this in the Lithuania episode, but if you want to be incredibly technical, historically, the Polish Lithuanian Commonwealth had some colonies. Way back, yeehaw, when they thought one island in the Gambia, as well as Trinidad and Tobago, would be good overseas investments, making them the only sites that the Polish had colonized outside of Europe. Then what? Oh, happened? I did not know. In that. the end, it was too hard for them to manage and they sold them off. The end. So anyway, <laughs> here are some places of interest you guys, the Polish geography, suggested we mention this episode. They have quite a few UNESCO heritage sites. A lot of them are like chapels, the Holy Mountain of Gabarka, the Painted Village of Zalipe, Chopin's Heart, this rock city, the Upside Down House, rock the city. Village of Zalipe, Chopin's Heart, this rock. Is it like a cave city? Maybe. But. In rocks, and then water filled in the cave city. Yeah, never. Rock did. city, the upside down house, Kosciuszko yeah. Mound, the carrot house, the world's most narrow house. Tons of cool oh, statues man. and monuments like these. The world's tallest pope statue. Tons of World oh. War II sites. It's kind of what they're known for. But the most famous one probably being the Auschwitz concentration camp. Of course, there are way too many churches like these. This one was where all the former kings were coronated. And of course, there's Warsaw's St. John's Cathedral. There's a bunch of synagogues that actually survived World War II. And there's even a wooden mosque for the Tatar minority in Krushinyani. There's so many museums and galleries. Here's a bunch of notable ones and too many castles, but they're very proud of having the There's world's largest medieval castle. castle in Melbourne. Yeah, Poland oh, does not oh. fall short when it comes to sites to see or things to do or nature to explore. And that means we move on to the next segment, the... Geography? Wow! I know there's some epic Polanyi, mountains in the south. That's all I know about fields. geography of Poland, and that it's flat. That little corner where the roads didn't go. They're like, he was like, every corner the roads go, and then the roads didn't yep. go to that yeah. corner. Poland is not all flat and not all plains. There's much more to it than you think. Poland is generally divided into five physical regions. The coast, the lake lands, the Polish plain, the Polish uplands, and the mountain regions. Much of Poland's coast along the Baltic Sea is straight until you hit the east and you get these interesting natural formations called spits. Yeah, we noticed that in Gdansk, there's just like these little like, I don't, they look like on Google Maps, you just think they're like a sandbar or something. And we're like, oh, I wonder what would be at the end of that. We never got to explore nope. it. Cool. Talked about them in the Lithuania episode, but basically, spits are thin, narrow sandbanks that divide the sea from another body of water, creating saltwater lagoons, the largest one being the Bay of Puck, the Szczecin, and the Vistula Lagoon, shared with Russia's Kaliningrad exclave. Much of the country inland lies on the flat Polish plain, part of the greater North European plain, a huge open flat segment of Central Europe that extends across multiple countries. Many people say that this is both the blessing and curse of Poland, because although a third of the country is forested, this one being the largest national park, and about a third is arable, making them a powerhouse contributor to Europe's agriculture sector, it did kind of make it easy for outside forces to enter and invade, yeah. with little or no natural yeah. obstacles barricading the interior of the country. Anyway, within this plain, many rivers like the Notek, the Varta, and the longest river, the Vistula, meander through the fertile valleys, passing through many important cities like Warsaw. In the north side, you have two massive lake districts, the Pomeranian and the larger Masurian, which also holds the largest lake of the country, Larkshnyadve. The further south you go, the higher the elevation yeah. gets until you hit the Poland uplands a little further south on the border with the Czech Republic and Slovakia you find the two main and largest mountain chains the Sudets and the Beskids which form the north part of the larger famous Carpathian mountain chain here you can also find the tallest peak Mount Rysy right on the border of Slovakia all right and that just about does it now I need my triple shot of espresso break and this time art is gonna come in to finish off the physical geography section what do you want me to say Barbie the next thing on the teleprompter now as you can see by this point Poland has a lot more than just flat plains and lakes they even have moving sand dudes in the north oh, and wow. a small desert in Boyan Doof which literally translates to mistakes. Yeah, Poland <laughs> deserts. You never think those two would go that's together. That's a very right? interesting Oh, thing. and there's also a crooked forest made up of trees oh, that bend cool. at a 90 degree angle. Many people have Why? theories as to how it got that way. Some say it's natural. Some say it was a dude trying to make chairs. In any case, Poland is a major producer Probably of the apples one. Probably. in the world as well as being the world's largest treacle. Treacle? What the heck is treacle? And amber, amber exporter. <laughs> I don't even know what amber is either. What is that? Petrified tree sap? It actually is. It is. Whoa. <laughs> Today, though, Poland's <laughs> economy is now mainly driven by the service sector and industry with main products like machinery and cars, buses, and video games being their largest export. Anyway, Poland mm. also has quite a few endemic That's animal really species. That's really interesting. Like I do know something. I remember hearing something about that where uh, some countries, it just ends up paying better to just make games and like sell them on steam a lot even if it doesn't sell that well it sells that just ended up paying so much better than whatever job 
Must have been Poland, and uh, that's about so many dang games coming so from many, Poland. Yeah. Storks, Eurasian lynx, roe deer, and they have one of the largest populations of the rare European bison. Which oh, have you really? guys ever had a bison Not burger? I mean, that's like really yeah. good. All right, don't eat those; those are endangered. And bears. In fact, a bear once served in the Polish army, what and the there's heck? a statue dedicated. Those are endangered. Oh, he's like that picture edited in. in. That picture. Once... That picture is probably not real. Look at the bears. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's like very concerned. I don't know if he wants to be mortaring enemies. He just wants everyone to be happy. It's like my dog when there's a loud noise. He's like, why? Why? He's in the Polish army and there's a statue dedicated to him. Look it up. Gold old boy tech. Anyway, time to finish yeah. up with food. Some of the top Yo, Polish dishes. You guys, dumplings. the Polish Dumplings geography. is what we had in Poland. It was really, really good. We did not expect dumplings to be a thing in poland we no. thought that was more of an asian like invention and we want to go back and try them again because we've had so many dumplings since then we want to know exactly how it stacks up it, that was like one of the first like international dumplings we had well, i've had asian dumplings like from like chinese dumplings in the u.s or japanese dumplings but that was yeah outside yeah it's very interesting that was your first dumpling like ever wasn't it yeah i think so Peeps. Geography. That's what I call them, Art. Suggested we mention include things like bigosh, cabbage rolls, galanka pork knuckle, roasted duck served with honey and apple. So many Ooh. soups like these. But the national dish being sour rye oh. soup. And of course, oh. the most popular dishes many people have heard of. Pierogi, kielbasa, kavanos, and Krakow style sausage. And bagels. Yes, bagels originated from Poland, from the Polish mm. Jews. Not New York. But they did move to New York. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and of course, you cannot talk about Poland without mentioning baka. Some say it was invented in Poland. Some say the Polish just make really good baka. But either way, baka usually takes up a huge oh section in most Polish stores. I've seen this guy in baka. <laughs> no, no, you haven't. That was not pure whiskey, and we don't talk about that here. Polish people know what they like. They're a distinct people. Speaking of which, we now move on to. Thank you, Art. Thanks. Can I do like one of those special effect outros, like, you yeah. know, Wolverine theme? Can I have the claws sure. or something like that? Sure, yeah, go for it. Here. Okay. Ah! Is it true if I kill you, I become you? Let's find out. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Very random. It does work. Now, some of you guys have told me in Poland, there's kind of like a word that sums up the Polish mindset. Zawatwicz. It means something along the lines of accomplishing tasks and taking care of business. Half of everybody in Europe has probably at one point at least encountered a Pole. They're everywhere. Working. Polish doctors in Germany. Polish contract workers in London. Polish bus drivers in Iceland. Work is in their blood and it's a huge part of who they are. The population is about 40 million. However, keep in mind, diaspora wise, there are about 20 million Poles living abroad and they are the wow. second largest Slavic group after Russians. The country is incredibly homogenous with about 96% of the population claiming to be Polish, wow. which is part of the Slavic family group. This makeup is mostly due to the Nazi intervention of World War II and Soviet relocation policies of the 20th century that drastically changed the previously diverse population. The country has few minority groups, however, of the minorities, the largest groups would be the Silesian at about 1.3% and the Kashubians at just under 1%. The rest is mostly made up of other Europeans like Ukrainians, Belarusians, Czechs, and non-Europeans. They use the Polish Zwati as their currency, they use the type C, E, and F plug outlets and they drive on the right side of the road. Now, of course, the main language of Poland is, of course, Polish. Lots of people say Polish is like really hard to learn. For one, they have seven cases of speech and too many consonants that are smashed all together at once. Geography Pavel says Sounds the Polish language is basically just. You mean how Lods was not even yep. close to what it looked like? Yeah, we would have just always said Lods forever. <laughs> They'd have been like, where are you going? And we'd be like, Lots. <laughs> like, what? <laughs> Wi-Fi passwords. Here's Conrad with a Polish tongue twister. Sometimes even the Polish Whoa. people say it sounds like, like he said a lot of consonants in a row. Like you don't even like like hear the like in between. It's just like it sounded like he was speaking in reverse. Yeah, it like, did. Yeah. 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 It's Ooh. very, I, I guess I've never, we've been to Poland. I don't remember Polish sounding like that. I don't either. Hmm. Interesting. Polish up. Because we're in Iceland and Iceland, Icelandic yeah. is so yeah. different that we just didn't even notice. On there. Polish. <laughs> Otherwise,
Otherwise, Poland is kind of a sociological anomaly. Even though they are Slavic, it's kind of like the easternmost extent of Latin influence, which explains why the majority at around 86% identify as either Catholic or, in the very least, nominally Catholic, varying degrees of devotion. Catholicism plays a huge role in Polish culture. They even have a channel dedicated to the Pope on TV. Politically, Poland is usually a more conservative nation that holds to its roots, and even though they're part of the EU, they usually do not let anyone tell them how they should run things in their own country. No. It's their home, their rules. It's like, all right, so it's settled. Uh, what do you think of this proposal for the union, guys? I hate it. Now, Poland, <laughs> you're a key player. We need you to like this. I still hate it. <sighs> come on, Poland, <laughs> don't be stubborn. Oh, really, Germany? You want to come back to Poland again and tell us how to do things around here? Do you remember what happened last time? Wow. Oh, my. Are you really going to play this card again? I always will. <laughs> a little exaggerated, but yeah, don't push the Polish. They've gone through tons of that. I mean, literally, like a fifth of their population died during World War II. The majority of them were Polish Jews. Often in tight-knit Yiddish-speaking communities, Poland had one of the highest populations of Jews prior to World War II, and at one point, up to 10%. They played a huge historical well. role in what Poland was and would be. Poles are proud that they were the only European-occupied country to never collaborate with the Nazis. They never officially surrendered, and all those years the Nazis were there, the underground army kept fighting. Poles have an incredibly oh, wow. complex history. I mean, they had a weird electoral monarchy thing? Conrad, explain. So the royal elections of the Polish Lithuanian Commonwealth became a thing after the death of the last Igelonian on the Polish throne. And at his death, it was decided that there would not be a royal dynasty that would just continue from generation to generation. That is to say that they would elect a king from a royal dynasty in Europe, but after his death, they would once again elect another monarch instead of letting his children take over the Polish throne. Thank you, Conrad. <laughs> Taking all that heavy stuff. So what does elect mean? Does that mean the yeah. rich people elect? Yeah, because it's not like you'd think like, oh, that just sounds like a democracy, but it's different in the sense that I'm sure there's a lot of caveats to it. Yeah, yeah. In Polish people have told me there's the always kind of like this sense of somber, stoic, suspicious, cynical, yet productive and prudent mentality that encapsulates the Polish. It's a weird paradox when you see them because it's like... Ugh, being Polish is the worst. Seriously. I know, right? I hate Polish sausages. They're so gross. They are, and the government is just totally whack. Yeah, yeah. Poland is terrible. <laughs> what did you f***ing say? You can't <laughs> say that. You're not from no. here. Yeah. Well, that took a little longer than expected, so uh, here's Hannah with culture stuff. I feel like a lot of countries are like that, yeah. actually. Yeah. They, like, talk bad about their own country, and then if somebody else, like, would say something, or from, like, uh, their, like, rival country, they're like, no, <laughs> we're better! Yeah, yeah. It, it's an interesting... It kind of makes sense, I guess, because sometimes you just want to complain about things, and you, you can. But then when other people complain about it, you're like, why are you complaining about that? <laughs> it's interesting. Stuff. Good to be back. Polish people have gone through a lot. They were pretty much fought for and invaded over 40 times for about wow. 400 Yikes. years. Nonetheless, the Polish people held through those centuries and retained their sense of identity. For one, in Poland, it is actually just as popular, if not maybe even more, to celebrate one's name day as well as your birthday. Poland has quite a high level of tertiary educated individuals, with about 80% of the young adult population having enrolled in university. Also, wow. side note, the 35% of Polish people living abroad are referred to as Polonia. There's a contest where we figure out who is the strongest man in the world, and Poland has won the most of those contests. That guy is very we strong. Have the Silesian and you know Kishulin. what that is fueled with? Uh, probably just like just protein. Straight vodka. Oh yeah. Has won the most of those contests. Then we have the Silesian and Kashubian minorities. Let's let Conrad explain this one because you know. It's a little complex. The Silesians, who live for the most part today in Upper Silesia, are an ethnographic group with a distinctive dialect of Polish. Internationally, though, it's considered not as a nation or people, though some within the region consider themselves as a nation, which the Kashubians are, and they are considered as a West Slavic people separate from the Polish people. They are loyal towards Poland, but they have their own uh, recognized uh, minority status, they have their own traditions, they have their own cuisine, and they have their own uh, minority status, they have their own traditions, they have their own... What is that? Is that like an egg white? Uh, a little bit of fish there. It's like caviar? And some fish? Uh, bubbles? And pickles, cabbage, radish. maybe no, it's not an egg white, it's definitely like mayo or like the cream cheese. The, like, 
sour cream, yeah, or the the yogurt. What would that taste like? Three little drops of olive oil on the top or something. <laughs> it looks like it might be like a fancy meal. What would that taste like? I don't know. Anyone from that region, uh, let us know what that dish is and what it's like. Weird. That's very interesting. I gotta admit, if I saw that, I wouldn't be like, mm, oh, yum! <laughs> have their own language. There are even bilingual signs, which um, Paul will definitely put in now. Thank you, Conrad. They've also racked up quite a few Nobel Peace Prizes at 17. They are front runners of innovations and inventions like kerosene and the kerosene lamp, the oil well, the bulletproof vest, and the modern drug test. A lot of festivals can be found year round throughout the country and in different regions. Popular ones include All Saints Day, May Day, the La Cognac Festival in Krakow, and during Christmas, you might Whoa. see the creepy Turon everywhere. To expound a bit more on Polish music and arts here, that's Scary. You know, it's Keith. Or whatever. Yeah! Music in Poland goes way back to its ancient Slavic roots. Instruments typically used include things like the wood horn, the hurdy gurdy, oh, the horse, the hurdy gurdy, drum, the pedal, accordion, and the suka. What you call me? Even though he had spent most of his time in France, Chopin was born in Poland. His homeland was always one of the central themes to his often somber and melancholy masterpieces cherished worldwide. During the Polish National Revival, this dude, this way, yeah. This dude collected varieties of folk music for broadcast, including the most famous ones, these which are still performed to this day. I know that uh, there's this guitar player named uh, Jakub Zichetsky, and he is amazing. Thank you, Keith. <laughs> nice. <laughs> and now the most complicated part, history. In the quickest way I can condense it, Slavic tribes and states in the Vistula Basin, Piast Dynasty, Greater Poland, Christianity and tribal unification, Pomerania is annexed, this dude becomes the first king, feudal disintegration, Mongols invade, Czechs invade, Teutonic Knights invade, Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth, Swedes invade, Prussians invade, end of the Commonwealth, Constitution written, Napoleonic Wars, Kingdom of Poland and Free State of Krakow, Russian partitions and Russian Poland, World War I, Polish-Soviet War, independence from Russia, Germany invade, World War II begins, communism years, independence, weird West Germany stuff, some other interesting things like they got a Pope and a Nobel Peace Prize, first fully free elections, they joined NATO and the EU, and here we are today! Some wow. You guys I remember all of it. Uh, I know exactly what just happened. Yep. Uh, it just sunk into my brain. I'm ready to have a quiz. Uh, let's all go. Right. Let's, let's... <laughs> Give us a quiz in the comments right Most now. Most geography suggested we mentioned in this episode include all those dukes and kings. Pretty much any hero that fought with the winged hussars. Copernicus, although he was technically German. Marie Curie. I know the winged hussars from Civilization VI. Oh. He was actually Polish. Mikołaj Rai, Pope John Paul II. All these athletes, these directors, all these artists and musicians. The dude from the movie The Pianist was a real guy. These American revolutionaries. And speaking of Americans, John Krasinski, Kristen Bell, Steve Carell, and Roman Polanski are also... These guys were both in the office. Wow. Polish, Apple co-founder Steve Wozniak. And finally, of course, it's interesting Roman like when Polanski. you see like John Krasinski's last name and you hear Polish, you really like see it and you're like, oh, that makes we sense. Also and like Polish. Apple co Wozniak, you see that and you're like, oh yeah, that makes sense that that's a Polish last Founder name. Steve Wozniak. And finally, of course, Dregorz Brenczykiewicz. That oh. also makes sense that that's a last it's name. And there's a lot more I could have mentioned, my, but that would take I'm going to change long. my name to that. My first name. The They've left their global mark. And speaking of global marks, that brings us to... As a central player in Europe for a long, complicated history, it's no surprise Poland has picked up quite an entourage over many, many years of Polish existence. For one, as part of the Visegrad group, the Czechs and Slovaks are generally considered the close West Slavic brothers. They've had very few wars and conflicts with them. They understand their languages, kind of. However, they both kind of think the other sounds funny when they talk. For Russians, it's more of like a people versus government thing. As people, Poles and Russians get along quite well on a human level. It's just the I imagine this is exacerbated greatly now governments that often yeah. disagree and clash poland for a while was under the iron curtain and warsaw pact which complicated things even more but as crazy as things get there is always kind of like this universal slavic understanding which is why ukraine comes in as a pretty close friend ukrainians love to come to poland for work there is also a fast-growing ukrainian community and they kind of share a similar post-communist struggle alliance although they still kind of don't like how ukrainians honor the upa which is a whole other story poland is kind of like germany's biggest regret that they have to constantly be reminded of literally every 
every day as they are neighbors, but they are the largest economic partner for them as well. Germany does have many bilateral relations with Poland. It's the 21st century, people have grown up and moved on, and the future looks bright mostly between the two. Quick note, Lithuania is like the divorced wife that they remember having some of the best years of their history with. Today, when a Pole meets a Lithuanian, they just kind of nod and smile, understanding everything the other is thinking without a single word. Their best friend, however, every Pole has told me the same thing, Hungary. Historically, they've shared some of the same monarchs, heroes. They've always helped each other in times of need. There are many parks and monuments commemorating the friendship between the two. There's even a saying in Polish, two brothers, both to the saber and the bottle. In conclusion, let's <laughs> give this to Conrad. Conrad, what do you have to say? Poland is a country that has a lot to offer both geographically and has been through pretty much everything historically. It's been an empire, it's been completely erased from the map, and today Poland is a growing and thriving country. I'm sure that the role of Poland on the European scene will only grow. Thank you, Conrad, and thank you, Art, for being in this episode. Stay tuned. Portugal is coming up next, guys. Wow. Poland. Lots to learn about Poland. I mean, obviously, so much history. So, so much. much that we just learned about the geography, even that we didn't know about before, and we know a decent amount about geography. So, very nice video. We haven't been in Europe for a while. I feel like our geography knowledge of Europe is slowly disappearing. It's definitely disappearing. We're, all the cities we knew are going to disappear out of our heads and all this stuff. <laughs> Poland, who wants to invite us? Yeah. And pay for all our food. We don't have enough money, but <laughs> so uh, uh, we say we're going to come when we have enough Eventually. money. <laughs> uh, hopefully you guys enjoy the reaction. Let us know more information or more good videos we should watch about Poland down below. And uh, we'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching. Bye. Bye.